Welcome to another deep dive. Today, we'll be tackling Niels Bohr. Ah, Niels Bohr. A giant in the world of quantum physics. I'm sure you know him from high school physics, but get ready for a whole new perspective. Okay. Because his legacy is interwoven with the mind-bending world of modern quantum tech. Wow, okay. We'll be using an essay by Jorgo Schnepphat okay. called Niels Bohr, Pioneer de Quantum Physique on Atom Theory as our guide. Sounds good. So get ready for things like superposition entanglement, stuff that'll make your head spin. It really is amazing how these ideas from the early 20th century are now fueling technologies that seem like science fiction. Yeah. It's really a testament to how fundamental research can truly reshape the world. Absolutely. To appreciate Bohr's contributions, let's do a quick level set on quantum mechanics. Okay. It's not just about tiny particles. It's a completely different set of rules governing the universe at its smallest scale. Right. In the quantum realm, the predictable laws of classical physics break down. We encounter things like Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, right. which says we can't know both the position and momentum of a particle with perfect accuracy. Right. The more we nail down one, the fuzzier the other gets. So there's this inherent limit to what we can know at the subatomic level. Mm -hmm. And then we have superposition. This is where things get really wild, right? Exactly. Superposition means a particle can exist in multiple states at once. Right. It's not just that we don't know which state it's in. It's genuinely in all possible states simultaneously until we try to measure it. Okay, so it's not like a coin flipping through the air. Yeah. But more like the coin somehow being both heads and tails at the same time until it lands. That's a decent starting point, though it's even weirder than that. To describe these probabilities and possibilities, physicists use the Schrodinger equation. Now, here's what I find really fascinating. These mind-bending principles aren't just theoretical curiosities. They power the tech we use daily. And Jorgo Schnepet emphasizes this a lot in his essay. Absolutely. Lasers wouldn't exist without the quantum phenomena of stimulated emission. Right. And transistors, the building blocks of all our electronics, rely on the quantum behavior of electrons. Okay, so quantum mechanics is baked into our modern world, which makes Niels Bohr's contributions all the more significant. Mm -hmm. Schnepphat really paints him as a central figure in all this, with his Nobel Prize coming in 1922. Yeah, Bohr was already deeply immersed in quantum theory by his late 20s. Wow. He tackled the major problem with the existing Rutherford model of the atom, right. which couldn't explain why electrons didn't just spiral into the nucleus. Enter the Bohr model. A revolution in our understanding of the atom. Yes. As Schnepphat explains, Bohr proposed that electrons could only exist in specific quantized orbits around the nucleus, like lanes on a highway. Right, and these orbits weren't arbitrary. Yeah. They were defined by three key postulates. Okay. First, electrons in these orbits don't radiate energy, so they stay stable. Second, their angular momentum is quantized, meaning it can only take specific discrete values. Okay. And finally, transitions between these orbits happen through quantum jumps, where electrons absorb or emit photons. Okay. Yeah. Bohr's model, as groundbreaking as it was, wasn't perfect, but it provided a crucial bridge to modern quantum physics. Schnepphat even links it to the development of the Schrodinger equation. Right. Which gives us a much more detailed picture of how atoms behave. Exactly. Bohr's model was a stepping stone. It gave us a way to visualize and understand the quantization of energy levels in atoms. His work also played a massive role in our understanding of wave-particle duality. This idea that particles can act like waves and waves can act like particles. It's a concept that's both elegant and incredibly counterintuitive. Yes. Schnapphat yeah. uses the famous double slit experiment as an example. Yeah. Can you refresh our memory on that one? Sure. Imagine shining a beam of light or a stream of electrons at a barrier with two slits. Okay. Common sense says we'd see two bright bands on a screen behind the slits. Right. But instead we get an interference pattern. Oh. A series of light and dark bands, just like you'd see with waves overlapping. But here's the crazy part, as I recall. Yes. We get the same pattern even if we send electrons through one at a time. Yes. As if each electron goes through both slits at the same time. Exactly. It demonstrates that the electron doesn't choose one slit or the other. Right. It's in a superposition of states, going through both simultaneously. And this brings us to Bohr's principle of complementarity, 
which Schneppat digs into quite deeply. So complementarity means that quantum objects show us different properties depending on how we observe them. Precisely. It's like a coin where you can see heads or tails, but not both at once. Right. We can observe the wave-like or particle-like nature of a quantum object, but never both simultaneously. Right. The way we choose to measure it influences the properties we observe. So observation itself plays a role in defining the reality of the quantum world. This is what shaped the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, right? The Copenhagen interpretation, which Bohr championed, says that reality at the quantum level isn't objective in the classical sense. Right. It's influenced by the act of observation, which was a radical departure from the deterministic view of classical physics. And this, of course, sparked a lot of debate, especially with Albert Einstein. Ah, yes. The legendary Bohr-Einstein debates. Schnepphat frames them as a clash of titans in the world of physics. What was at the heart of their disagreement? Einstein, while acknowledging the brilliance of quantum mechanics, was deeply troubled by its probabilistic nature. His famous line, God does not play dice, captures his discomfort with the idea of inherent randomness in the universe. Right. He believed there must be some underlying deterministic reality that we hadn't yet grasped. So while Bohr embraced this randomness as a fundamental aspect of the quantum world, yeah. Einstein sought a deeper, more deterministic explanation. Exactly. And this clash of viewpoints led to some incredibly fruitful discussions. One of Einstein's most famous challenges was the EPR paradox, which he developed with Podolsky and Rosen. It focused on the bizarre phenomenon of entanglement. Entanglement. Now that's where things get really mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Schneppet describes this as a central theme in Bohr's work. It is. Imagine two particles linked in such a way that their fates are intertwined, even if they're light years apart. Yeah. Measuring the state of one instantly determines the state of the other. Wow. Seemingly defying the limitations of speed and distance. So Einstein saw this spooky action at a distance, as he called it, as proof that quantum mechanics was incomplete that there must be some hidden variables governing this behavior. But Bohr had a different interpretation, right? Bohr argued that this spooky action was just a manifestation of entanglement, a fundamental feature of the quantum world. Okay. For him, entangled particles aren't separate entities, right? but rather part of a single, indivisible system, regardless of their physical separation. So while Einstein sought a deeper level of reality, Bohr embraced the strangeness of entanglement as part of the quantum fabric. And this debate, though never truly resolved, propelled the field forward. Schnepphat actually links it to many of the breakthroughs we see today in quantum technology. Absolutely. The back and forth between Bohr and Einstein wasn't about winning or losing. It was about refining our understanding of the universe and its most fundamental laws. And that's where we'll pick up in the next part of our deep dive. We'll see how Bohr's ideas, once considered purely theoretical, have now given rise to incredible technologies like quantum computing, cryptography, and even teleportation. I can't wait to delve into that. Buckle up, everyone, because things are about to get really interesting. <laughs> Welcome back to the deep dive. We're still swimming in those quantum waters of Niels Bohr's legacy. Right. And as promised, things are about to get even wilder. Yeah as we explore how his theoretical work has given rise to some practical and potentially world-changing technologies. It really is remarkable. I, I mean, you're right. We're moving from the abstract to the applied now. And Irigo Schnepphat, in his essay, doesn't just lay out the history. Yeah. He connects the dots to the present in a really compelling way. Absolutely. Let's start with quantum computing, yeah. something that's been generating a lot of buzz lately. How does Bohr fit into all of this? Well, his work on the nature of quantum reality is really fundamental to how we understand and build quantum computers. Remember superposition, yeah. where a particle can exist in multiple states at once? Yeah. Well, that's the basis of the qubit, the quantum bit. Right. Instead of just being a zero or a one like in a regular computer, mm. a qubit can be in a superposition of both. I remember Schnepphat using an analogy in his essay. It's not like a light switch that's either on or off but more like a dimmer switch that can be set to any level of brightness. That's a good way to visualize it. And because of this ability to exist in multiple states simultaneously, quantum computers can perform calculations in a way that classical computers simply can't. So for certain problems, they're not just faster. They're tackling things that would be impossible. Yeah. For even the most powerful supercomputers we have today. Exactly. It's a completely different type of computing. And it's all thanks to the strangeness of the quantum world that Bohr helped us to understand. And it's not just superposition at play here. Entanglement 
that spooky action at a distance, as Einstein famously called it, also plays a crucial role. Okay, entanglement. Yeah. Schneppat spends a lot of time on this, emphasizing how revolutionary Bohr's insights were. Remind us how this factors into quantum computing. Well, imagine two qubits linked together in such a way that they're no longer independent entities, yeah. even if they're physically separated. If you change the state of one qubit, the other qubit instantly changes its state as well, no matter how far apart they are. So it's like they're communicating faster than the speed of light, uh, which, as Schneppat reminds us, is a big no-no according to Einstein's theory of relativity. Yes, but it's not about communication in the traditional sense. Okay. It's about a fundamental connection that goes deeper than our classical understanding of space and time. And it's this interconnectedness that allows quantum computers to perform incredibly complex calculations tapping into a level of computational power that was previously unimaginable. It's truly mind-boggling stuff. And to think that all of this stems from the work of physicists like Bohr grappling with these bizarre quantum concepts decades ago. Yeah, it speaks to the power of theoretical work yeah. and how it can lead to innovations that reshape the world. But let's move on to another fascinating area, quantum cryptography. Okay. Which is already having a real world impact. Right. I remember Schneppat mentioning that this is one of the most mature areas of quantum technology. Yes. With real world applications already in use. What makes quantum cryptography so special? Well, it leverages the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics to create a level of security that's impossible to achieve with classical methods. It's all about exploiting the uncertainty principle, another concept that Bohr was deeply involved in developing. So how does that play out in practice? Well, imagine trying to eavesdrop on a communication channel secured with quantum cryptography. Okay. The very act of trying to intercept the message would disturb the quantum states of the particles carrying the information. And because of the uncertainty principle, this disturbance would be instantly detectable by both the sender and the receiver. So it's like having an alarm system that goes off the moment someone tries to peek at your message. Exactly. That's pretty clever. It is, and it means that quantum cryptography offers, in principle, unbreakable encryption. It's the ultimate solution for protecting sensitive information, something that governments, banks, and anyone dealing with confidential data are extremely interested in. It sounds like something straight out of a spy movie. Yeah. But it's actually based on the fundamental laws of physics. And to think it all goes back to the pioneering work of Niels Bohr and his contemporaries. It's a testament to how fundamental research can lead to practical solutions that address some of our most pressing challenges. And it's not just about cryptography. Quantum technology also holds the potential to revolutionize other fields, including medicine, material science, and even something as mind-blowing as teleportation. Wait, hold on. Teleportation? Are we talking about beaming people up like in Star Trek? Mm -hmm. Because Schneppet mentions this in his essay. And I'm having trouble wrapping my head around it. Well, it's not quite as dramatic as what we see in science fiction. Right. Quantum teleportation isn't about physically moving objects from one location to another. It's about transferring quantum information, the state of a particle, without physically moving the particle itself. Okay, so we're not talking about teleporting Captain Kirk, but rather the information that defines his state. I'm still not sure I fully understand it, but it sounds incredible. It is. And the key to this mind-bending feat is, once again, entanglement. Okay. We create two entangled particles and separate them. By performing certain operations on one of the entangled particles, we can instantly affect the state of the other particle, no matter how far apart they are. So the information about the state of one particle is instantly teleported to the other particle without any physical transfer of matter. It's like sending a fax, but instead of sending a physical document, you're sending the information about the document, which then recreates the original at the receiving end. That's a good analogy. And while we're not teleporting people yet, this technology has enormous implications for quantum communication and computing. Imagine being able to transmit complex quantum information across vast distances with perfect fidelity. It could revolutionize everything from secure communication to the development of super fast quantum internet. It's clear that Bohr's legacy extends far beyond his theoretical work. Yeah. He's helped to unlock a whole new realm of technological possibilities that we're only beginning to explore. Absolutely. And as we delve deeper into this quantum landscape, we'll continue to uncover new applications and push the boundaries of what's possible. But for now, let's take a step back and reflect on the broader impact of Bohr's work. Join us for the final part of our deep dive, where we'll explore the philosophical implications of his ideas. 
and what they mean for our understanding of the universe and our place in it. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. As we wrap up our exploration of Niels Bohr's enduring legacy, I'm really struck by how his work has shaped not just technology, but also like our very understanding of reality itself. It really is pretty remarkable. I mean, you're right. Jurgen Schnepphat makes that point very eloquently in his essay. Bohr's contributions weren't just about equations and experiments. They were about grappling with some of the most fundamental questions about the nature of the universe. Yeah, we've talked about how Bohr challenged the deterministic worldview of classical physics, embracing that probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. He showed us that at that subatomic level, uncertainty isn't just a lack of knowledge. It's a fundamental feature of reality. Right, and that had profound implications, not just for science, but for philosophy as well. Yeah. Bohr's principle of complementarity, for example, suggests that we can never fully grasp the totality of a quantum object. We can see it as a wave or a particle, but never both at the same time. It's like trying to understand a coin by looking at only one side at a time. You get a partial picture, but you can never see the whole thing at once. Exactly. And this idea that reality is, in a sense, incomplete, or at least not fully knowable in a classical sense, was a radical departure from the way we traditionally thought about the world. So Bohr's work wasn't just about revolutionizing physics. It was about expanding the boundaries of human thought itself. Yeah. He forced us to confront the limitations of our own perception and to embrace the strangeness of the quantum world. Yeah, and this I think is one of the most enduring aspects of his legacy. He showed us that the universe is far more mysterious and awe-inspiring than we ever imagined. And this sense of wonder, this willingness to embrace the unknown, is what drives scientific progress. It's what allows us to make breakthroughs that reshape our world and challenge our understanding of reality. Absolutely. And as Schnepphat reminds us, Bohr was also a firm believer in the importance of international collaboration and the responsible use of scientific knowledge. He saw science as a force for good, a way to bring people together and solve the world's most pressing problems. It's a message that's more relevant than ever today. As we continue to delve deeper into the quantum realm, unlocking new technologies and pushing the boundaries of knowledge, it's important to remember the ethical implications of our discoveries. Right. I mean, we need to ensure that these advancements are used for the betterment of humanity, not for its destruction. And I think Bohr, with his deep understanding of both the power and the potential pitfalls of scientific progress, would wholeheartedly agree. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Niels Bohr's legacy, I'm left with a sense of awe and gratitude. Awe, the beauty and strangeness of the quantum world that he helped us to understand, and gratitude for his unwavering commitment to both scientific exploration and human progress. Well said. A huge thanks to Yorgo Schnepphat for his insightful essay, Niels Bohr, Pioneer der Quantum Physik and Eton Theory, which served as our guide on this fascinating journey. And to our listeners, we leave you with this final thought from Niels Bohr himself. Anyone who is not shocked by quantum theory has not understood it. Embrace the wonder, keep questioning, and never stop exploring. Till next time, keep diving deep.